Thank you, Acting Speaker. Sign of endorsement already and you haven't even heard what I've got to say. <laughs> Being the representative of the region with the highest farm gate output in Victoria, it gives me great pleasure to speak on this absolutely proven ABS figures. Let me prove it to you soon. <laughs> um, let me, it gives me great pleasure to speak on this bill, which makes a number of amendments to acts re, uh, regulating the agriculture, fisheries, meat processing, fresh food and hunting industries. I'm going to spend my time focusing on the contribution mostly of the changes to the Meat Industry uh, Act, simply because that's what I've had the most correspondence about from my constituents. Um, the changes to that particular act will see Victoria become the first state to legalise mobile abattoirs and the changes that will follow will allow for mobile laboratories to become licensed meat processing facilities. This is what's been causing concern within the industry and was what had, has had the industry make contact with me. My own electorate, in my own electorate we have Midfield Meats, a company that exports product right across the globe and is one of the region's largest employers. They have some genuine concerns about these amendments and I understand the Australian Meat Industry Council, AMIC, of which Midfield is a member, also have raised many of these concerns with the Minister and also the Shadow Minister. Uh, it's important to note that AMIC is not opposed to the long-standing practice of on-farm meat processing where a family may kill a beast or a sheep uh, for their own consumption or other animals, as has been going on for a long time and is important for the farming community to be able to continue that as we do on our farm. It's uh, also, uh, this is already provided for under the current legislation, but these amendments seem to be opening up to that practice for uh, retail sales through farmers markets and other such events. And it's that that's concerning the industry who have jumped through many, many hoops to be able to have a industry that is incredibly responsible, has a robust process around making sure animal welfare issues are managed um, responsibly, environmental issues are managed responsibly and that uh, the reputation we have as a clean, green um, producing country of very high quality food remains an intact reputation. Um, the Council's concerns on these amendments were wide ranging and stretch from the biosecurity issues, problems that, we, that may occur including requirements for wash down procedures between locations and the disposal of animal waste products uh, from the sorter process. And it's this concern that there will be a breakdown in the, the cold chain as well, you know, going to farmers markets. Um, there's also concern around the ability of mobile abattoirs to comply with environmental regulations, food safety concerns and reputational risks, as I said, uh, to the whole industry if a mobile facility is found doing the wrong thing. Um, back before I was a... Um, Member of Parliament, I was very involved with um, the dairy industry in particular um, and agriculture generally in making sure we worked very, very hard to ensure we had those robust um, processes in place. I was chair of the policy advisory committee for the markets, trade and value chain uh, for the Australian dairy farmers and vice president of the Victorian United Dairy Farmers of Victoria, um, arm of the VFF, NFF. So, what I was doing in those roles often was talking about the risks to our reputation and how we ensure that robust process. And you may be familiar with uh, bodies like Dairy Food Safety Victoria, which uh, many of the commodities have similar bodies um, that make sure these processes are maintained as robust. And Mike uh, Taylor, the current chairman of um, Dairy Food Safety Victoria and Helen Dornham I've, uh, from uh, Dairy Australia who represents dairy industry as well on that body. I've worked with both of them for many, many years. So, um, you know, we've worked very hard and the reason is because we do want to keep that image of uh, clean and green so very strong. Our markets overseas are, are worth an enormous amount to us and we can't have any breakdowns. So. We do not want that risk that uh, putting a mobile abattoir that we haven't got the regulation actually nailed yet. We've got a piece of legislation that hasn't got guidelines that we can actually identify whether the same hoops that uh, the abattoirs have to jump through, whether these um, mobile abattoirs will have to do the same thing. So we don't want, as the member for um, Murray Plain said, any mischievous activities from animal activists that um, destroy that reputation and I think there's quite a risk of that unless this is done very, very well. Um, there's a massive demand for high quality and safe product uh, in 
And, in part is, and this is partly the reason Great South Coast is uh, the number one reason, as I referred to, for farm gate output in Victoria, and actually number two in Australia. And this very day, um, we have the front page of my local newspaper talking about um, how we produce uh, a farm gate value of close to 2.2 billion in farm output from my region. And farms, food processors and manufacturing plants provide 60% of the region's income and one in five jobs, they're extraordinary figures. And uh, the newly unveiled plan, in fact today it's being launched, um, the uh, Great South Coast Food and Fibre Council have launched the Food and Fibre Plan, um, demonstrates what an agricultural uh, powerhouse, quote from um, the Tony Ford, the CEO today in the paper. So this, um, uh, this is front page news written by the um, author, the journalist Rachel Houlihan, a local girl who understands the value of agriculture in our region. And it's front page because we've got to keep our agriculturalists who work very, very hard supported. And um, we don't want risk and uh, risk is something we need to mitigate and as an industry we take very responsibly and I think in this legislation I hope to see that reflected. Um, you know, and I worry that we just don't understand how we can help our farmers properly and one of the ways we can do that is making sure we look after our uh, product to plate um, transport links and we all know that in South West Victoria we've got the worst roads and uh, we've got to put a lot more money and this government does not understand that product is not getting to market and right now we've got the um, product sitting on the wharf because we've got militant unions who are breaking the law and, um, you know, where are we going to respect the hard-working people who, not only the farmers, but the volunteers who are, we're getting the union stopping product going off to um, where it needs to go before Christmas. We've got the CFA issue where farmers who volunteer their time and others are getting... No, absolutely, are getting... The union is running this state. This is not being run by, by you. It's been run by the unions. And... You know, look at the situation where you just don't understand what volunteers do. We've got this Nerdles uh, crisis in South West Coast where the beaches are being littered with plastic and rather than support the volunteers, we're getting the Minister not saying a word. I haven't heard uh, Ms, uh, Minister D'Ambrosio saying, thank you, volunteers who are all cleaning out the vote. How, how, boat beach, how can I help you? Instead today, giving money um, or here to uh, Wan and Water, perhaps. Great organisation, no problem with supporting Wan and Water. But what about the community organisations who are working hard to coordinate the, the beach clean-up? Where is the appreciation for those volunteer groups who uh, work very, very hard and the schools that have gone out and helped? Somebody's coordinating that. People are doing the hard work and grunt and I'm afraid the Minister's missed that opportunity to, uh, to respect and understand the value of that. So, um, yeah, uh, where am I up to? Um, so roads are a massive issue and, and until we start to recognise that um, product's not going to get to Melbourne while it's on roads like that in, a, in, a good, uh, a, in an efficient way and the cost is going to come back to farmers. And it's really not hard, you know. My husband and I um, have been running a dairy farm for 17 years prior to coming into here and we spent a lot of money on our, um, our roads internally on the farm so you soon get to know how to do it well. And, you know, you can invest a lot of money in... in a product uh, like your gravels and your your base, but unless you maintain your roads, and this is what we're seeing in South West Victoria, there is not enough maintenance for the, the drainage is poor, the culverts are blocked, we should be seeing more and more graders on the roads to clear away the size of the road because we're going to have... Well, if you've tripled the budget, we're only seeing you repair the same road over and over again because you don't know how to build a road and keep a road maintained. And whilst you don't understand that water will undermine any track and destroy that, all the money you put into it is just thrown away. But that does... It, you're absolutely right. The, the inability to manage um, a budget has just been absolutely obvious since the day I came into this place. Poor, poor management of, of financial fiscal management. Yeah, we're touchy today because I'm pretty cross with seeing the way the uh, wharfs are destroying farmers' products and we work damn hard and the, and the product's just sitting there before Christmas and we'll spoil. You know, these are perishable products like meat and, um, and dairy. So, yeah, I reckon they're fairly touchy issues and uh, I do represent a region that is very significantly uh, agriculture, so I think I've got good reason to be. But, um, you know, whilst... Um, 
you know, we've got an opportunity to protect, nurture and embrace and grow our region. But we won't do that while we've got a government that won't act now and, not, and it won't recognise the importance of regional Victoria and stop treating people outside the metropolitan boundary with such contempt.